Hey everybody, this is Adam here with the Here to Listen podcast. I'm really glad to be saying that I'm among the core group of podcasters. I've got Max here. Hello. We've got Jack. How are we doing? We've got Leon fully maintaining his social distance on the phone. Say hi, Leon. Hello, everyone. Hey, man. Yeah, good. We're picking you up good. Yeah, so we've we've done a couple of podcasts. This, to me, is a bit like the next level. You know, we've done our practices. We've got comfortable. You know, we're back as a sort of team to a certain extent, you know, with Leon being at home at the moment. But I think that's the idea, is that we're kind of going to phase it in over time. On a bit of subject about that, that myself, Jack and Max are in the office, but obviously we're maintaining social distancing to make sure that we're abiding by all those and keeping ourselves safe, actually, because the last thing we need is to get everybody ill and then spread it around to everyone else. So, yeah, so the, the subject that we've got is is from some engagement with our Facebook followers. I know we're all hesitant to use the word followers, but crew, family, whatever... Yeah. But thanks very much to those that voted for this particular subject, which is social media. So with Max, knowing somebody who's, well, from my perspective, is an expert, because I don't know that much about social media. I kind of dabble a bit, but yeah, it's nice to have somebody in that's experienced it, the highs, the lows, the variety by the sound of it. So I'd just like to introduce Ellis. Hello, lovely to be here. Nice, nice to have. Nice to have a, like, a, a guest as well that's uh, an expert in their field as well. So yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing what your thoughts are. The thing that I know about the guys was essentially they were saying you were TikTok famous. I don't know if that's a good start <laughs> off point for you, mate, but if you want to just give us an, an overview, perhaps. Yeah, I feel like I feel like you never really feel like you've got that many followers because you, you always want more. Like when I, when I had 100, you always think, oh, you know, when you get to a thousand, that's when you, you're like famous. And then when you think you get to 10,000, you never really feel like you're doing that well. But I, I have a lot less than a lot of people, to be fair. But I think it's just luck, really. I've just had a few big videos that have done all right. Can I just add to that, Ellis, just on, on this, this subject, because it was actually myself and I'm going to hold my hands up. It was my fault that he would come out with t- such such a statement. And that was all to do with my son. And I think I, I remember yeah. telling you about this. Obviously, you came for an interview with us to, to take part in the uh, seasonal work that we often we put out. The very next day after doing that interview with yourself, I took my son to JD Sports, walked through the doors <laughs> to see you working at JD Sports, which I thought, ah, oh, yeah, 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 I, I recognise this guy. Walked a couple of metres past and my son was pulling on my arm. 11-year-old son, he's like, Dad, Dad, that guy's TikTok famous. He goes to my school. And I was like, Mason, I interviewed him yesterday and I was the best dad for about a day. For about a day. And then it wore off. But yeah, that statement comes from fair, that's, that's the only time I've actually ever got recognised. I get recognised in school in that, but I think that's just because my videos get shared with groups. But I don't think if I went anywhere else, people would recognise me. For those it's that, nice. yeah, that was nice. That made me happy when you said that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those that are listening that might not be aware, what sort of videos are you talking about the ones that you say did well what was the so theme I always or? think the ones yeah the ones I always think my worst ones done well and I think the ones that I put loads of effort into usually because it can just be like really random the ones that do well like that you put no effort into at all the first one that I've done that I've had to do a date now so I got in trouble from my work because I've done it at work in uniform but that's a <laughs> story I am um, I that was just me and two other people and we were just mouthing to no yeah and we put like things on the top and that got like 900,000 views and I did not expect that to happen because that was like my second video as well and then people assumed that I was like really like I was an expert on TikTok and I was like I mean I've got better now but it was literally my second video I had no idea what I was doing at all so it was quite strange fake it till you make it it's got to be done yeah exactly yeah (laughs) I think that's a good uh, something that we're experiencing as well. The the whole like you start a thing, you're never quite sure where it's going to go. You learn definitely yeah. as you go. There are definitely mistakes made that you can always adapt to. I mean, it's good good lesson for life, I think. But in yeah. in terms of the videos themselves, what would you say is the content that was so attractive to people? Why did those kick off more than any others? I think you either on TikTok you either have to be like good looking or funny, and I'm just good job that I'm both. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that they're they're more they're more my, my my videos are more funny and I looked at my analytics the other day because I've just added that to TikTok so you can, so you can see what age group and what gender and that and mine is mostly um, under I think under 14 which doesn't surprise me because the humour was really quite not not my sort of thought, thought, thought humour really but yeah that's basically what the, the it's kind of comedy slash I've had a few ones that have been what's the word like pleasing to watch almost 
Oh, uh, satisfying. Yeah, kind of satisfying. It was like me, it was actually me setting up my cameras and stuff. And people just really like that because I, th- I suppose it inspired some people. But yeah, that got a few. And sometimes as well, videos get more views if they want to use the sound that you've got because they'll save it, they'll like it. So it saves into their likes and then they'll they'll use that sound. So that's why you get more popular sounds than others because people obviously want to save that kind of stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. And the thing is, that sort of stuff, did you find out as you go along? I was about to say you find out as you go along because I've done sim- found out similar things in regards to YouTube, for example. But I didn't find out at the beginning. It's something that, like you've just said, certain sounds, popular sounds, viral sounds, and all that sort of stuff. The analytics side of things, the algorithms, and all that sort of stuff, I didn't know nothing about. I sort of found out at the end. But did you know all that before you went into it? That first video that no, was and it's, it's, it's crazy how like. You, you look into it more and you actually see like the TikTok algorithm and the YouTube algorithm and see like how when you post stuff at certain times it, it, it gets out to more people and because I think what Instagram does is it's, um, it will send a photo to like 5% of your audience and then depending on how they engage with it will depend on how many more people it, 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 will, it will put on their feed. So it can depend on obviously time and it is strange to look into because you don't really think about that, but actually people make like quite a big living off it. Yeah. There is a lot of thought that goes into it and what they do. A hundred percent. I just said that to you the other day, didn't I, Adam, that actually you can't just go into something like this. Some people can just fall into it and, and have huge success and be really lucky with a few viral videos. But actually, when you look at the science behind it, how smart you'd have to be to get all that on point to a point that you know exactly when you need to be posting that video, you know exactly what keywords you need to put into that, the content matches the keywords and all the rest of it. There's a lot of hard work that goes on behind the scenes with these videos. Whether yeah, it's TikTok, 100%. YouTube, but I also think that you need to be likable well and people actually need to enjoy what you're doing it doesn't matter what time you put it up if it's a rubbish video of course and i think you can definitely see when someone is not fake not faking what they're doing but they're more interested in that other than if you post a good video it's probably going to do well no matter what no matter what time you put mm. it up at i think there's some that just explode as well i mean max you were saying about all the stuff that goes on in the background but now and again you get a video that just oh. for whatever reason just blows up as well without kind of any effort other than just putting it up there yeah, it's literally. hard to find the middle ground isn't it like because some because I, I imagine that would lead you to believe that if you have a video you've got to put so much effort into getting it you know done but then yeah and people do do that people put loads of effort into a video just for it to get like three views and then they'll post another one that they've just recorded of their mum doing something stupid in the living room and it will Mm. just get millions and millions exactly that effortless it's it's those ones that do blow up that are just like they're just done they happened it wasn't like the person recording the footage for example thought about oh this video is going to go viral they've just managed to catch something on camera it's ticked some boxes made some people yeah. laugh or caught someone's attention that's been spread so you, yeah there's yeah i know exactly what you're saying and it, and it reminds it reminds me of like the start of youtube when like all the big videos were them was you know like charlie bit my finger like, oh, yeah. like that was just <laughs> some guy like filming his kids and like, all the cat videos and like tv must be human when they just see them getting millions and sometimes billions when they put all effort into like making a series or whatever and it does do as well <laughs> i actually remember the media tutor from cbc college you'll know who i'm talking about i won't mention his name um, but he was head of media and he was going absolutely mental explaining to me how youtube how the videos on youtube are so poorly edited the way they cut from frame to frame without even blending in he yeah, was yeah, yeah. baffled to the fact that people would waste their time <laughs> and watch it and he just couldn't understand it because he spent his whole life in editing and making movies and doing all the media stuff that he's done uh, yeah there's people out there making millions billions like you say from well, it looks like a load of rubbish, but actually, he's still done in a way. Yeah, it just keeps shows people engaged. That loads of production and like all the professional equipment doesn't change how funny or how enjoyable your video yeah. is. If you can make yeah. a video funny with something really simple, or you can make it really entertaining, but by like those videos where they drop a sheet and then run away from their dog and their dog's standing there like, yeah, yeah, what to yeah. do. <laughs> that is so simple. Anyone can do that, but it's getting millions um, of views. Yeah. And people probably like quite enjoying more natural content, and it's not all yeah, like yeah, definitely high like high cost stuff. And it it's gives you something to do. Like, if you happen. see that, you're gonna try it at home, and you're like, if you, if you see that happen to your dog, or the one with the cat and the cucumber, <laughs> you like leave a cucumber behind yeah. the cat. If you've seen it on video, and it's something that you're definitely gonna do. I mean, I'm interested yeah. from the perspective of the podcasts themselves as well. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I can imagine the kind of attention that somebody's random video, like there was one a little girl in the back of a car singing that kind of video. So 
it goes on, say, The Fighter and the Kid, which is a mega podcast in America, and that yeah. must then propel that video even further. You know, we talk about the viral videos, but I think a lot of that has to do with the interconnectivity of a lot of other systems there that get spotted, get noticed. And if you can imagine, a lot of the podcast people are going to have producers that are going to be scouring the internet trying to find things that are worth putting on their show. Again, builds it up. So I kind of like it from the perspective of us all building each other up. Do you know what I mean? I think it's starting to get into yeah. that that kind of mode at the moment r- rather than the sort of selfish 80s which I'm well aware of as a 43 year old bloke yeah. but I, I'm seeing a lot of social media that can be damaging but can also be super supportive among all those because back in the day it was like a famine thing like I've got to do this thing and never mind anybody else I've got to do my thing whereas these days there's just so much content out there there's enough to go around there's, there's plenty mm. of content out there for people to access so and there's as well constantly more um, more apps coming in like TikTok is it's, it's fairly new really and it's just blown up for whatever reason and people have jumped on that all of a sudden yeah. why, why do you and think at the that minute, people have got a lot, a lot more time yeah yeah exactly true. yeah i was actually gonna say that actually that's something that i was gonna bring up with the amount of people that we've worked with over the years students especially we've seen thousands right thousands and thousands we've seen with our own eyes that social media is progressing progressing massively more and more people in tune and using it but now we're at a point and at a time in our lives where actually i think even more people are using it because of what we're going through right now in lockdown yeah. even those that were yeah. very much on the fence like i'm not doing this i'm not using <laughs> social media in any way shape or form they are now because yeah. they they're bored, senseless, literally. And how else are you yeah. going to talk to yeah. your family? Also, like, where, like, all these different, like, podcast companies, big brands, where they now aren't making any money as they normally did in, like, shops and stuff like that, they're creating so much more content for everyone else to watch for YouTube and stuff like that as well. So it's mm. actually, like, yeah. a mad time for, like, content at the moment as well. Yeah, I mean, on, on... That adapting and being more creative. Yeah, on, on that subject, Ellis, I mean, how, how have you been doing in the lockdown? You know, what have you... What's, what's yeah, it's, it's been good. I mean, to be fair, I'm quite lucky that I've got like family to keep me um, entertained and I've got quite a big house as well, which can be nice because you can get away from them when you need to as well. But yeah, it's been good. I've been trying to just do more with social media and, that, and I wanted to get some of my podcasts out, but it, it has been difficult. I've just found myself laying in bed a lot of the time. But I do, I've tried to film um, more TikTok videos as well because I find myself like, like you said, in lockdown at the moment, more people are jumping on it and I don't really want to lose my place and get forgotten about because more and more people are doing it so it can be quite um not that i get stressed out but not that i think oh, i need to post a video today otherwise you know i haven't posted a video for about two weeks now so. it does sound like a degree of pressure though i was just about say. to say yeah, that yeah sometimes and i think the biggest gap for me after the videos was the one after my my first big one because i was so worried about like having <laughs> to match the views even though you can never predict what what's going to do well and what's not so <laughs> But how did that, that video yeah. do? That second that one. That was the video after. Yeah. It's done really well, actually. It's done it really well. Of, um, yeah, I, I wanted. I was with my sister um, in my mum's room, and I just, I thought, I just need to post a TikTok. I don't care if it does well. I just need to post another one. And I, and she had an iPhone 11. She just bought the iPhone 11. The camera, I, the camera one. You zoom in on the nails. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So and that it. goes, and it goes, um, iPhone 11 check or whatever, and and that done. That that in fact, I think I got more than the first one. <laughs> okay, so my it's question now, Ellis, what about the video after that? The video after that didn't as well. I had two big ones, and then the one after. We've done a lot better than the ones obviously before both of them videos but um yeah it didn't do it didn't do as well thing is with tiktok i find that a video either does very average or just keeps going up and up and up well it does for me anyway but i have very i have not a lot of in between ones i have big massive ones that have done like near a million and then little ones that are just on a thousand or whatever little minnows how did you feel when you didn't get as much views it's got to be that like adam said the pressure there's got to be because i i'm gonna hold my hands up i fell into the trap the age that i I am like I'm still I'm well involved with technology and social media and stuff and I've felt the pressure felt the need if you like to want to grow more and and get that support and rah 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 and when it don't happen I've not had the success that you've had I can't help but think that if I had and then to watch that say grow on the next one or, or decreasing somewhat the pressure for me I think I'd be you know when you get writer's block you start trying to think too hard. Oh, yeah. Did you ever get that where you yeah. try too hard then? Yeah. Rather than let the creativity yeah, come. That, that's the thing with TikTok. I, I just, that, I didn't really beat myself up too much about it because like I, like the, the videos that done well were, were so rubbish. And I, and I think the, the video after that, like I said, didn't put that much, I uh, did put more effort in, sorry. And it, and it didn't do that well. So it was a bit like, a bit disappointing, I suppose. But 
not every video I'm going to do is going to do well. And I'm, I don't get too mad about that, but I know some people do. And even on Instagram, when they post a photo with, and they don't get enough likes or whatever, people delete it. And I can understand the pressure, but people need to not care so much about what, what people think of them and, and yeah. not just doing it for the likes, really. Dude, I'm glad to, to see it. you stayed humble, yeah. Ellis. You know, you haven't let the fame go to your head. <laughs> well, I'm not famous. <laughs> I've been recognised once by Max's kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a thing about like the initial stages that you. It sounded like you set your own bar quite high. Maybe not intentionally, but it's it's there. That bar is there, and that seems to be what you're basing the rest of your videos on at the moment. Like, is it is it a success? Is it not? So somehow, if it's not as big it's somehow not a success. Yeah, yeah. I think, because I do think, like, when a video doesn't do work very well, I do have to think why it hasn't <laughs> and then why the other videos have done well so then I can post more of what people like. But sometimes the reason why it gets out there isn't even because it's good and people won't enjoy it. It's just, yeah. just it will get clicked on. So not not talking about clickbait, but sometimes people will post something literally just so it gets liked even if it's not a good video. Mm. Yeah. Or, on the flip side, you could have children like I've got, my, my children, not Mason so much, but Mia, she'll literally leave, and this is not just YouTube, this is TikTok as well. If she finds a good video, she'll watch it, and they just automatically replay, don't they? Automatically yeah. replay, yeah. And I've gone in the room, her phone was red hot, it must have been watching this video thousands of times. So that she gave that one <laughs> TikToker, whatever you would call them, <laughs> TikToker, <laughs> A thousand views. TikTokist. Yeah. TikTokist. Um, but no, and I'm like... <laughs> is that how it works? That's crazy. I don't know how the video goes yeah. you just no, you, I don't, you only get one view per person, but the video, if someone keeps watching it, it will do better. That's why you get... There's a trend going around at the moment that um, you've got to try and pause it on the... Uh, on the on yeah. the point that they want you to pause it on, like it'll Clever. be a secret message, and you won't get it, so you'll watch it again. And TikTok yeah, sees yeah. that that person will keep replaying that video, and will send it, will send it to more people, and obviously sees it as a good video. Uh, Mind blown, yeah. just there. I was like, whoa, this yeah, is some really Matrix is. stuff. I think that's why TikTok's done so well as well. Is I think it can be really addictive since they're short videos. It's not like YouTube, you can just keep swiping. If there's a video that you don't want to see, you just swipe past it, and you see another one. And then if there's one that you've watched, I find myself watching it again and again and again. If it's something satisfying or something really <laughs> funny and then i'll go and show my mum or something she probably yeah. won't understand it but did you use vine back in the day what was that sorry did you use vine i didn't do vine now I, I think i might be a bit too young i think i was like 14 yeah yeah well he's only two years younger than me so probably about then but i use vine and what was the one that you used before tiktok that you think is tiktok so, no it was tiktok <laughs> it is no yeah, it, it was, was musically musically, it was musically. It. before tiktok was tiktok i had an app on my phone called musically and i'd become a bit of a master on it. i wasn't successful in reviews and stuff but i was creating some personal content me and the kids on family trips and stuff montaged them edited them put some music to them and all the rest of it boom didn't use it for a few weeks woke up it was gone the app was gone from my phone but it had been replaced with TikTok. It's with exactly TikTok, yeah, because they basically I don't know if they rebranded or I think they might have been bought by someone else, mm. but TikTok because a lot of people when they go on when they went on to TikTok they realised they already had an account and they thought what the hell but it's because it is the same same yeah. app. If you posted videos on musically they'd still be there with TikTok. These apps that only have like six second videos, they seem to come up every like few years and then completely disappear, and then someone comes up with the same idea, with exactly the same map, with maybe a little bit more editing on there, and it comes out and blows up again. Mm. Like every, like, three or four years. I'm pretty sure there's one before Vine as well, because that's exactly what that mm. was. Like, it is probably the mm. easiest way to blow up on social media is through, like, these really short clips. Yeah, then quick videos. Yeah. Ellis, I'd like to open it out a little bit, actually, because the subject is social media. Obviously, you've got the video side of things. I'm just curious about... I, lo I love the question, what are your thoughts on social media? Because I feel like everyone's got an opinion on that. What would be yeah. yours, like, broadly looking at social media as a collective? I think social media can obviously be really, really good and a good way to connect. And, like, I wouldn't... I wouldn't. Some people, I think, would choose for it not to be here. I, I'd definitely keep it, and I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think social media can be toxic. It's the people on there that can be toxic. Social media itself is, is completely fine, and, and the actual premises of it is, is good. It's the people that, that can... That, that ruin it sometimes. It's true. It's, like, it's no different when you look at 
dog owners and people say, oh, that, that breed of dog is, is vicious and dangerous. Actually, no, it's the person that's bringing it up because if they've had it from a puppy or uh, any dog, any canine can go vicious if, if, if it really wanted to. Yeah. But when you've tended, loved and cared for it all the years and brought it up in a good way, actually, that dog is absolutely fine. And that's I've yeah. never heard that sort of spin on it. Do you know what, Ellis, that's, that's actually awesome because it is all about the people that are putting the, the, the comments and how yeah. people use it. Things like that are always going to get abused by those people that are going to ruin it. It's just how we mm. stop that sort of stuff happening. I mean, don't get me wrong. Social media could do more like uh, apps like Instagram and stuff. They they could do more probably to take away some of that toxicity. Toxicity, is that word? That is, that toxicity. Is the word. toxicity. Yeah, where is now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they could, they could do a lot to improve it, but evidently it is the people that need to change the way they use it if they're going to want to change it all. As you were talking, I was just doing a little bit of research. There was something that I I heard about a, po- a post by Ronda Rousey. She's a ex MMA fighter and now in the WWF. Yeah. And I under, I don't know much about WWE. WWF. I was going to say that's what you showed me. Age twenty years. That WWF. Showing me age there. Uh, that's how much I pay attention yeah, the to the WWE. I used to love the WWE when I was little. Yeah. Apparently, somebody in the WWE. <laughs> Her name's Ham- Hannah Kimura. I don't know if you guys n- have ever heard of her, but I think she she committed suicide as a result of cyberbullying. And Rhonda had this post that she did that I'd like to read out, actually, because it really encompasses what you're saying. So she says, cyberbullying is very real and growing a growing threat to us all as a society. Succumbing isn't weakness, it's human. We have evolved to feel as if our lives depend on social acceptance because the majority of human history, our survival has depended on our social groups and standing within them. I know the trolls that spend days harassing others online are battling their own mental demons but please find a way to release your venom in a way that won't poison others even a straw's weight can be the one that breaks the camel's back just the tiniest push could be what sends someone over the edge be the kindness you wish to receive instead of malice and neglect you're trying to pay back don't pass it on protect the world from what you have endured instead of spreading it i want some powerful stuff that yeah yeah because you talk about like you began by saying it's amazing you know it's great you have nothing but good things to say about it initially and that's i think how most of us feel but there's always this slight undercurrent there's always like the flip side to that and it feels to me that it is almost 50 50 it can be just as damaging as it can be productive and supportive and this is the sort of price that we pay and people a lot of the time because i see a lot of youtubers getting a lot of stick as well and a, a lot of hate and people often use the the kind of the the comment to say like um if you're putting your yourself out there um are you not exposing yourself to that and you have to deal with the consequences but i don't think that gives anyone the right to then say what they want and actually bully people online like i get there's there's criticism and and wanting your youtubers to do better or whatever but um which i don't know why you would anyway it seems pretty pointless but when people actually take it that step too far and like tell people to kill themselves and literally just try and destroy people's lives it's just not the same and it's just it is disgusting. I watched a video um, the other day from a YouTuber called Imogen. She said exactly that, really, and the fact that people say to her that she should have to deal with it because she's a YouTuber and that's what that's what she's doing. There's comments on YouTube for a reason, which is true, but some of the stuff she gets sent is, is just at, ridiculous. At the same time, though, if you opened up a shop, you wouldn't have customers coming to your shop giving you abuse over the stuff that you're doing just because you no, own exactly. that shop. No, exactly. If I sent an email to um, if I sent an email to another one of my co-workers telling them to kill themselves I'd obviously be told off by HR and, and lose my job yeah. so just because that, that that's what they want to do and that's the job they've chose doesn't mean that they should be harassed by people that don't agree with them I don't guess, like them I guess it's easy to harass people online when you're completely anonymous and yeah there is no way yeah. and there is and there is different backlash. levels of it as well like there's not always the same hate. Like sometimes I could find myself on TikTok if there's a video that I have been annoyed by. Sometimes I've actually written something out to say like, um, n- not ever hating, but yeah, then I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll type it out and I'll think, no, what, why do I care? Why, like, why do I want them to see that? And then I get rid of it. Like, so it is easy to, and I can understand like the low level stuff of people just, because I've had comments on my, my podcast videos on YouTube um, of people saying, uh, kind of slagging off some of our, our opinions and stuff, which is, is, obviously the low level of the um of the spectrum and not it's not as bad as some of the other stuff that people get but i just think like there's one thing opening a discussion and saying you disagree but and then there's another thing kind of pick pick picking apart what we've said and and wanting to be rude about it really i think when you're talking like podcast style and you've got people engaging in that sense obviously 
everyone's got their own opinions. That's going to leave anyone sort of open to sort of people not being fully happy with your opinion and, and getting involved. And like you say, we can deal with that. That's cool. Everyone's allowed their opinion, but how far do they are they willing to take it to leave their mark at the bottom of your video for everyone to see? Do you know, I've, I've, I've not seen too much of it myself, but I know that it goes on. There's many a celebrities that have seen the, uh, the dark side to social media, which is why I've got in big, bold letters, and I think I'll put it on the email to you, Ellis, social media, the good, the bad, the ugly. I don't even know why that comes to my head. It's a movie or something, isn't it? Yeah, it's a movie. It is a movie. Yeah, yeah I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it is an amazing platform. They're, they're amazing platforms platforms when when i think of social media i can reel off about five apps but actually when you look at the bigger picture there's so much more than just those main you know instagram facebook twitter youtube there's so much more than that that i'm not fully aware of maybe because of my age there's there's younger sort of versions of apps and all different sorts of stuff all different ages so what sort of advice because although there's a lot of people that are really enjoying social media it can be toxic and it can yeah. deteriorate their mental health and well-being so if there is a message that you could sort of give people I don't know, the youngsters should we say younger than yourself because what is the age now what, what do you feel what does everyone feel the age is that people are starting to use social media i think it depends what app really because i think a lot of the kids are on tiktok i find yeah that the kids from the teen have just tried to move to whatever app the adults aren't on like they started on <laughs> facebook then yeah. they kind of moved to instagram and then kind of they've had more of their parents come to instagram and they've tried to move away and now go on to a different app where it's just their age, I suppose. Keep, keep parents, running until the parents get fed yeah, up with changing. Parents are all yeah, over exactly, TikTok yeah. now. <laughs> parents are all over TikTok now. I'm sure they've got they their own playlist, haven't they? Yeah. Have, have you been much in the receiving end of, of any negative stuff yourself? I've been quite lucky, to, to be fair, and I think a lot of my videos are watched by friends and family and that who are really supportive. Mm. Um, and even people um, like old school friends that I would expect to be a bit more judgy have actually messaged me and said that they have really liked what I've done. I can imagine if it was a different type of content, I could get different responses. But people, yeah, pe people for, for me have actually been really supportive. Sometimes people don't understand, especially older people. I remember telling my dad, and my dad was like, what do people want to listen to you for? And I'm like, well, like, I've just, I don't know. I just feel like I just want to have a lot to say, and that's the reason I wanted to do it. But I, yeah, no, I've been, I haven't had too much, other than people kind of more criticising, which I don't mind. I've been, I've been harassed a bit more on Instagram, really, and TikTok from just random people that, like, it doesn't actually affect me that much because, I've like, I've been told to kill myself. Oh. And I just think when people say that, because people just say it's the worst thing you can say, but I actually see that as, like, one of the least common things you can say. And from my opinion, anyway, someone just tells me to kill myself. They're like, no, like, why yeah. Like why would I do that? It's, I get more annoyed when people uh, pinpoint more about my content and kind of say what I'm doing is stupid or that would offend me more than just someone saying more personal myself stuff, or, more, more personal yeah exactly sort of, yeah. yeah when they've actually had to think about it it's a bit more I'll like tell your story, you know, if you're going to insult someone <laughs> I got one of those right and I told Jack about this I got told and you lot are going to laugh now jack's already started laughing <laughs> i got told i don't i can't remember her name i'll find out but it was on this youtube video thing that i done she said i talk like i've got cotton wool in my mouth and ever since that day <laughs> were you laughing at ellis <laughs> apparently i'm muffled and when you lot started saying i'm quiet in the microphone i thought i better take the cotton wool out again <laughs> <laughs> but it played on my mind for a few days and i actually made me really cautious about how i was speaking but then i thought yeah. you know what I've spoke like this all my life. I can't. I'm not. I'm not bothered now. I did. It hurt me a little bit, but that is the. That's as bad as it's got for myself. The thing. The thing is, if you look at like the person that posted it, how much was she really thinking about it beyond that initial post? She left you with something that to this day you still think about. It was only yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was it? No, it wasn't. Weeks <laughs> <laughs> ago. But it's something that you've been thinking about. So I mean, there's something about that. You know, we, we've talked about you know, the people on the other side that can just post things and might be just expressing themselves in whatever way that they can manage at the time because of whatever's going on in their life, like kill yourself, that kind of stuff. You know, you, it's hard to get in that mindset because I, I believe that nobody around this table and on the phone would think to do that. And as a result, we don't really know what circumstances needed to be in place for that to be said to you. You know, I can't, I can't even get into that frame of mind. No, neither can I. And the, the psychology behind it really worries me, like mm. why people would, would, would want to do that. And people don't actually understand. Like you said, it can just be like a comment where they just think that man sounds like he's got wool in his mouth yeah. or whatever. And they don't realise that people do focus. You can have my friend uh, who uh, models on Instagram and that she receives loads and loads and loads of positive stuff. 
and then she'll only focus on that one bad thing and that's what people don't realize and I, I always say that's why when so many people are saying how beautiful you are you complain about that one person that says you haven't brushed your hair like why do you care but people do really dwell on the negative stuff that, that is said more than the positive some, which people need to some not people do. i'm not sure what page is some of them i follow they actually try and promote negative comments on their posts just because they are comments and they know that the more comments they have the better they'll do so they'll put stuff on their posts like let's say it's a picture and they'll have a caption on top of it they'll spell the caption wrong so people are in the comments going oh you're such an idiot you spelt this wrong Why yeah, you spell yeah, that? yeah but they've done that on purpose mm. just to generate more comments so like meme accounts and stuff yeah yeah literally that so people have yeah. actually cottoned on to people they're like if they're going to comment negative stuff i might as well put stuff on there for them to comment yeah. to then help me out yeah. so it is quite smart and it is a good idea as well. Like I've done my, the, the second podcast that I posted on Spotify, um, I titled something that was very controversial. And actually in the video, we don't speak about, I actually titled it, do we do too much for remembrance though? Which sounds crazy. Yeah. And in the video, all we said was how, the, how our schools dealt with it. But we titled it that because we want we wanted people to click on it. And obviously, they get a bit rolled up. Mm. Um, say, no, we don't do too much for remembrance. Say, how dare you say it? And they click on it and they listen. They actually think, actually, that's not too bad what they're saying, really. Yeah. I've got to leap in just for a second there because you're on the subject of podcasts. And as people that are quite new at this, I wanted to just pick your brains a little bit on that one. You mentioned about Spotify. Is that audio only? Uh, yeah, audio only. Audio. I, I, I tried to say that I do one on... One on Spotify, one on um, YouTube. And All audio, you, including YouTube as well? Or do you uh, do audio and video on audio YouTube. Because I'm interested and that's in... that's why I don't do as many on Spotify, because it, it's a bit more work. I see. A bit more work to get on Spotify. Surely that's the easy side. No, it's, oh, no, it's a bit more work to get it on YouTube, YouTube. with okay, the yeah. edit, editing of the Because I'm interested in your thoughts that. about the, those two things, those two mediums. You know, the, as an avid podcaster myself, I listen to gosh, it must be like 15 hours a week of podcasts, right? Because normally I've got 15 hours of not a lot going on, driving, washing yeah. up, you know, all that. You know, it takes the sort of mundane, it makes the mundane bearable, let's say. So I'm inclined yeah. to think that it's all about the audio, but then there's a, there's visual options as well, which I know are much less, but I'd like to know from a sort of young person's point of view where you think that is heading. Well, it's different. I suppose it's different ways people view it because I will I will listen to podcasts in my car um, or while I'm doing work. In that case, it's better just for audio. But then if someone's actually going to want to sit down and, and watch a video, then people would prefer to watch it on YouTube, of course. But I tend to think like I will get my YouTube, I'll, I'll do the best ones on YouTube and put them out to as many people as I possibly can. And then anyone that's interested in what we're speaking about and wants to hear a bit more um, can obviously click on the link that sends them to my iTunes and Spotify that has a bit more exclusive stuff on there, I suppose, if you're actually more interested in it mm -hmm. nice. any any advice for newbies that was it uh i'd say i'd say just do it there's a lot of procrastinating and when, when i first started like i was so worried about making everything perfect and i think just just do it and like don't worry about don't worry about what people think and don't worry about your videos looking amazing because it will get a lot better and that's something that i need to take on as well because i've only i've been doing it for like six months i've only had one every month or whatever which i want to get a lot better at so mm -hmm. yeah just 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 actually do stuff yeah, I've heard the consistency is quite key. The regularity, you know, it's released on this day. You know, there's, you're yeah. building the expectation of it. You know, you began by saying that there were some challenges yourself around the whole lockdown period and almost like I've got so much time on my hands, there's absolutely no reason why I can't do it, but I like my bed as well, you know. And yeah. I wonder if that's a sort of a bit of a, a snapshot of what a lot of young people are feeling at the moment. Maybe, you know, they're off school at the minute, aren't they? You know, we're coming up to sort of school holidays. But in that period, the, the sort of purpose let's say you know the I get up the routine I suppose has been lost and you know I wonder about your own personal sphere and a bit wider people around, around your age how are they coping with all of that with the sort of routine being taken from them I think people are, are, are treating with it different ways like I've got some friends that are really social people and will go out every single day after school and obviously they're struggling with it a lot more than some people that would just go home and just sit in their bed obviously lockdown has made me realize how much i do actually like as much as i complain about getting up for school in the morning or whatever sixth form i do like that otherwise i will literally stay in bed until like 1 p.m just watching films and that's just not good for anyone so i think <laughs> i don't do credit i think yeah both both people people i suppose deal with it different ways but I've been all right. I've quite enjoyed that time, to my mm. <laughs> it almost, it Which almost... feels bad to say. I feel like guilty saying, like, I'm actually having a really good time when there's, like, a massive pandemic going on. But... Yeah. Yeah, to be fair, I'm with you, Ellis, on that. Like, yeah. <laughs> obviously, it's a bad thing that's happening, but, like, 
nothing negative actually come into my life yet. So. No, and it's, it's quite a good opportunity for people. Like I've been learning the guitar and trying to learn a bit more Spanish and stuff. And like people can, sometimes you do need a break, especially from all the social media and stuff, just to kind of sit back. And the first two weeks of lockdown, to be fair, I logged out of all my social media because I really wanted just to interact with my family probably at that time. On that one, Ellis, can I ask you a question that we had sent in from us uh, on Facebook? This is from James in Luton. And his question was, how many hours a day on an average do you spend on social media i've looked on my um on my because you can see it on your settings and it's stuff scary, isn't recently it? <laughs> it's gone up a lot more i think i have a bit lower lower than usual but it's still a lot when you look at it i can imagine mine would be about maybe well i don't know because youtube youtube is social media as well it and is. i will sit on youtube for probably a couple of hours maybe in the evening watching some videos and stuff mm. so but Instagram, Instagram, I use less. Snapchat, I'm on all the time. I'd probably the say maybe. Yeah, come, come on, Ellis. Stop, stop, stop. Give me touch, you look. Give me touch, you look. What's the number? Let's have a look. Screen time up, boys. Who's got the iPhone? Let's all have a look. Screen time up. Uh, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm, I'm actually happy to do this because I got a little update, I think, yesterday saying that it was down by X amount. So <laughs> whatever peak that I reached, I'm no longer in. My daily yeah, average yeah, yeah. just jumped up as I looked at it. Oh, I don't want to tell you that. My daily average yeah, my is daily average five hours, 43 what? minutes. Oh, mine's more. Oh, <laughs> mine's seven hours, 34 minutes. Hey, oh my god, mine's 550, 5.57 today, five hours, 57. Mine's so five to, hours, one minute. It, yeah. mine, I'm not gonna lie, mine was up to eight hours the week before when I was doing that editing Jeez. stuff because that's classed as yeah. being on the phone screen what time. It wasn't social media, that's just screen time. Yeah, that is my screen. So time. I had eight hours. If I look yeah, at, yeah, that's yeah, if I look still. at the social media, what else are you doing on your phone other than social media? So, what I do, yeah, mine, I've got a timer, so I only try to cut down on the Facebook and Instagram. Down, yeah. So I've put a timer for 45 minutes of Instagram a day and 30 minutes. Now I do normally go over that, but once that shows up, I'm then like, right. Yeah, I don't you need, need to, to look switch it off. Yeah, I don't need to spend any more time on it. That's do, you actually, do you actually use Facebook? Do you use Facebook? I use I don't, Facebook. Uh, I'm on it. I just scroll on it, watch videos. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so uh, you, actually, you actually go through it and swipe through. Yeah, I yeah. really go on notifications and just see if anyone's missing. <laughs> I don't really use Facebook. I'm telling yeah. you now, Facebook is where all the funny videos are. <laughs> Apart from, yeah, you yeah, do that's... get some horrible videos. No, see, I Facebook think that's more well. Twitter. Facebook's old people. I thought Twitter was good. <laughs> this is why I'm laughing in the background. <laughs> I am one of those people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it was, it's, it, if ever there was a social media for like my age range, that's it. You, you mentioned earlier about the parents, you know, that they get on certain ones and there's this idea that all the parents are on Facebook, that most of them don't move to the ones you mentioned. But yeah, we're kind of, there's a feeling for me, I'm sticking with it and it's about all that I can handle. So I'm not finding any others. So I've avoided everything else, but I'm a, not obsessed with it in terms of looking but I've got this thing where I've got to keep scrolling down and get to the point where I left off last time I looked at it <laughs> and I don't know how yeah, common yeah, that yeah. is but there's a and it, it, I've got a bit of autism as well and it's about kind of the completion of it right I've, I'm back to where I haven't missed anything do you know what yeah. I mean so and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and for me and I, it was an interesting thing that I had between me and my sister who's three years younger she uses social media quite differently and as a you know not quite a generation below but the years between us have really separated us in terms of how we use social media i use mine as a tool it's an absolute tool it's not a social media i'm actually not that interested oddly in like anybody else's lives i'm wondering about board games and mma and all that kind of, that's all i care about whereas my sister has got like th several thousand friends um on on facebook and her timeline yeah. must be absolutely jam-packed so that's the reason why yeah. i'm not that interested in hearing from people and actually i'm really brutal with it as well if you're a prolific poster you get moved from like what was it following to not or something yeah the, the not follow <laughs> oh, yeah, thing in well. the old days it used to be just complete disconnect which is the reason why me and yeah. my sister fell out but that's a long story but yeah it's curious yeah, it's I'd like that when you were saying like oh I could, oh you actually scroll i'm like i'm laughing to myself it's like yeah of course i do kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. so, sorry liam what would you say liam Nah, I always get stuck on the videos like that was saying yeah. but like, oh they'll be like they do like live gaming streaming so like Warzone yeah. will come up and they're like pro gamers and I'll just start watching it and I'm like yeah. 15 minutes later I've watched them play like three games so they're killing it so you can't stop watching it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what gets me on Facebook at a minute yeah. anyway. Yeah. It's just crazy how people use them for like such different things like I use uh, Facebook probably more for news and same as Twitter like I'm just subscribed to a bunch uh, following like local celebrities and stuff and just to see what they're doing whereas I use Facebook more for my family and see what they're doing and then Instagram for my friends and then TikTok for funny videos so it's good to have multi-purpose options I suppose yeah because yeah, I think my Facebook like you say it's got all my family on there 
It's got all my funny videos. And I don't want to keep scrolling past what my family's doing on the weekend when I'm trying to watch funny videos, you know what I mean? So if I could have yeah, them yeah. Split yeah. up, then that would be nice. Yeah. I think we're, we're going to start wrapping up now. And I wondered about, I, I wouldn't say that we put the world to rights regarding social media. We've definitely got all of our own individual experience. But, you know, I mean, what are your guys' thoughts on a sort of wrap up of social media? Well, I did ask right. Ellis earlier. Mm. And I don't think it's just aimed at Ellis. I think the question, I think what we need to sort of wrap this up with is maybe a positive message or an insp- inspiring message that we could put out there. Because let's be honest, our target audience youth and we're going to be working with a lot more youth within the future and it is very much youthful a youthful thing although not so much these days because of parents and stuff but just a little bit of awareness when it when, we, when we're looking at social media when we're talking about the ages getting younger what people are seeing is there any advice well, that I've we could give out i've got advice it doesn't come from me it comes from chris and oh, Ellis. Mate, you, I know can, you can I know tell me your views on this because it might not apply <laughs> to the, some of the funny videos that you're doing so chris said don't post anything on social media that you wouldn't be happy to have a billboard in front of your house with whatever you've posted on, just playing over and over and over again. Do you think that applies to you? Because I know you've done some... I'm not, I haven't watched all your videos, but I know a lot of TikTok videos are cringy. Would you say your videos, some of them are a bit cringy that you wouldn't want replaying over the top of your house over and over? Probably, yeah. Yeah, so would you take that advice on board? Do you think that's complete nonsense? I, I, I disagree. I've heard a similar thing that says... Um, don't post anything you wouldn't send to your grandma, which I agree with that a bit more, but like, I mean... But you also send them to your grandma? It, I think like, it depends as well. Like, Say if like, you're creating content for TikTok, uh, you're probably create, like, creating almost a character to show to everyone else on TikTok. Whereas if you're posting on Facebook and Instagram, it's different, like, you wouldn't post as cringy maybe stuff or stuff like that. Like, maybe, yeah, yeah I think... Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, TikTok, TikTok, I probably would have playing outside my outside my house because okay. it can literally go to anyone anyway. So I probably wouldn't mind. Yeah. But like, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't want like a selfie outside my house where people <laughs> driving past and yeah. seeing me like posing in a mirror. Or whatever. Um, yeah, so I think so it de- yeah, it depends. I suppose what you post. Hold on a second, Ellis. So basically, to... you'll ha- you'll have your TikTok videos playing on loop continuously, but you <laughs> won't have your Facebook profile picture hanging on your door. Is that what you're saying? Facebook, I would. Facebook, I would. It's only with my dad. But Instagram, All sometimes. Right, Instagram, sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'm a bit posy or whatever. Yeah. And if I had a better body, I probably would post like some some photos of like me on Getting the beach himself. or something. And I wouldn't want them outside. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think with Chris's message, I love that message only because, to me, it, it, like, honestly, if you went back and looked through all the stuff that I've posted over the years, there's loads of stuff that I would definitely not want hanging outside my house or over my head. But I've done it, and yeah. I feel like I'm at a point in my life where actually I don't really mind I've got a job and stuff. But if you was young, you're not employed, and you're posting stuff on a daily, you've got to be mindful that actually that could potentially stop you getting the job. You had experience within employment. We won't say the name. But you got told off for doing a TikTok video in uniform, for example. So there's there's pros and yeah. cons, there's do's and don'ts. Big time. There's things that people need to be aware of. And with Chris's message, I think the moral from that is just, just be mindful that actually the minute you post something, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, uh, whatever platform you're using, you lose rights to that video. Not just from ticking the terms and conditions, you lose rights because someone can screen record, someone can take a picture of it, they can share it, they can download it. Edit it. Yeah, they can do anything. There's numerous of things that could come back and bite you on the backside. Yeah. Just, yeah, you need to definitely be aware. But there's also like different people who have like, would be able to tolerate different like levels of that. For me and probably you, Max, if someone took my photo and edited it and posted it, I wouldn't, I think that's funny, but there's some yeah. people that 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 that, that, that would be like. Yeah, destroy and a lot of the times, people it. don't realise how they would cope with that until it actually happens. Mm-hmm. So it can be dangerous. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, for, for me, I've got this thing in my head: proceed with caution. And I think that's a thing that's quite difficult to do as well because of the rabbit hole that it can be. It can be just this thing that you, before you know it, you you know you you're on four hours a day or whatever on it. And I think it feels empty to me though because I can see. Proceed with caution. Okay, yeah, I hear you. And then boom, you're in there, you're watching loads. Of, it almost seems like that particular part doesn't matter. But I think going back to our earlier comments about maybe how you conduct yourself in social media is probably worth bearing in mind about what's on the receiving end of things that you say and, and, and things yeah. that you post. Adopt an alternative perspective perhaps a bit more often. Yeah, definitely. Be, yeah, just to see how it comes across. And people need to not care about likes as well. That's one thing that mm. I'd say is really getting 
I'm glad getting you said the most that. worst out of people. I'm glad you said that, but only because um, that is something. And I remember watching, um, uh, I think it was Black Mirror, a series they called Black Mirrors. I think it was on Netflix or something. There was an episode to do with how it was based in the future, Popping how we're basically living as a population. Just all we care about is the likes, um, how mm. many followers we've got. And it's it adjusted yourself, your social standing. Yeah, I love that episode. It's it crazy, great one, yeah. but it's mm. actually we're, we're not far from that at the moment. Mm. And I think I've been there again. Mm. I know that everybody that posts, which is let's be honest, the majority of the populations these days are posting in some way shape or form mm. slowly but surely that will grab hold of someone now someone said to me when you first start posting or you put things out there if you've got an option to turn the likes off so you can't see how many people have viewed how many yeah people have i liked would it. say that definitely do it and it is frustrating and it makes you sit on the edge and you want to check it you want to check it but you know what if it's going to work it's going to work i haven't been successful with that but it is some advice that i would put out there just just to not worry yeah. about it some videos are out, some music tracks released, like I say, five years later. So it, it, it can happen at some point, so mm -hmm. don't get too wrapped up in it. And there is support out there, isn't there? Yeah, stuff that's like another that. side of it, really, is yeah. that although it can be damaging, there's tons of stuff out there c that can support people as well. Ellis, before we wrap up, is there any sort of links or things that you want to direct our audience to? I don't think so. I think, I think we've covered most things. Um, I mean, one from thing your... I would say, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not just saying this because I have done NCS, but it is a good a good time to actually take a break from social media for three weeks. And people are actually completely different to sometimes how they are online. Mm. So even- Do some real socializing. Exactly, do some real socializing. And if any, if any other stuff like that, I just would encourage people to do it because it was a really good time for me. And mm. yeah, thank you guys for having me on. No worries. Um, any, any social media stuff you want to leave us with? Any uh, addresses? Uh, what yeah, do they call it? <laughs> what do you call it? Um, what handles. You that handles. Uh, plugs. Plugs. That's plugs. the word I was looking for. Plugs. 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 Cool, mate. Go ahead. Plug, plug my podcast. Yeah. It's called Are You Being Sarcastic? <laughs> Question mark. Like um, it. It's on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes. I'm not doing too well at the moment, but I will get better. So Whoa, nothing's bad. No, you're just starting off. Still content, buddy. Otherwise, we're not doing mm -hmm. well. Yeah, yeah, nice one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Really for nothing out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much coming on and offering us your Thanks thoughts. Hopefully, much. we'll do another one of these with you another time. But uh, yeah, I'll say goodbye to everybody and see you soon. See you later. Whoa. Until next time. Whoa.